Hello, welcome back to another video. The River Medlock episode 8 to be precise. And you're joining me on a journey where I'm following Manchester's River Medlock from the east of the city centre through the city centre to its confluence with the River Irwell. Now the River Medlock is a medium sized understated river that is steeped in Mancunian industrial history and just history in general to be honest with you. Now in this episode I'm not going to get wet, I'm not going to put the waders on at all. In fact it's all mainly filmed from the comfort of the, uh, the back bedroom. And the reason is, is because we're going to revisit the area that we did in Medlock episode 7 which is this video here. Now in Medlock episode 7, I'm well aware that you may or may, may or may not have watched that, but in episode 7 we dropped in at London Road into a culvert, a concrete box, and we followed the river and it came out at Princess Street in Manchester. And that concrete box has got so much to answer for. Because it was put in place to cut out two great big meandering loops of the River Medlock. And it was all done around the late 50s, early 60s, and it was to do with the Mancunian Way, which is a bypass around the city centre. And it was also to do with the extension of the University of Manchester Institute of Science and Technology. Now rather than say that, I'll say you missed. But basically, the Sackville Building, which is the great big uh, old building just off Whitworth Street in Manchester, behind that, they extended the university campus. And for some reason, they decided to do away with the River Medlock in that area. So we need to look at how things used to be about 60 years ago. So a couple of days ago I was in Manchester and I needed to set the scene and show you the area that we're going to look at. So if you know Manchester, you may or may not, we're going to go to behind the Umis building, we're going to look at, we're near Granby Row and we're, I'm going to set the scene for the area that we're going to look at. So let's get ourselves into Manchester. I'm just on Granby Row in Manchester. You'll notice there, the railway arch is behind me. I want to show you something. This whole area is steeped in Medlock history, kind of. Even though the Medlock is way, way over there behind me, tucked in a little culvert. So the whole place is full of Medlockery. Now, the reason I've come to these arches here is because pretty much where I'm stood now just here, the River Medlock used to run here. Let that be known as Archimedes' statue in that arch there. The street just beyond is Altrincham Street and the Medlock used to come, I think, roughly down below there, down there, and run around here in a, a meandering loop that got taken away. Let me just take you through the arch and I'll show you what's there now and why they did what they did. So Archimedes is right behind me there. This is Altrincham Street. We need to remember the Archimedes arch for a reference point for some photographs I'm going to show you in a bit. This is Altrincham Street. Over here behind me is the uh, university campus. You'll see it goes down a level. Let me just show you closely. Now, I think the Medlock was at a lower level. You see the arches up there, where we stood here now. I think this dropped even lower. And the loop of the Medlock come round that way there, just to the other side of the railway arches there, and then round here and back down that way. I'd have to show you on a map and I'll show you on some photographs. But I just want to establish this area. The railway arches on Altrincham Street, Granby Row is behind that. And this here is all the filled in area of the Medlock. Behind us over there, that is what is the, now the university campus with all the fairly modern buildings, used to be an area full of factories and streets that got completely cleared to make way for this. The Medlock now ends up in a culvert down at London Road, which is where you saw me uh, getting in with Connor in Medlock number seven. That concrete box cuts off this loop 
and text the Medlock way, way down that side of Manchester there. Like I say, I'll show you on some maps so you've got references, but I just wanted to show you this area. Okay, so let's go to the side-by-side -side maps. We've not done these for a while, have we? Um, you can look at either map, but I suggest you look at the left-hand map. Uh, just for now, you can see both cursors moving, and that's where we got in the Medlock, over on the right, right-hand map, where the cross is. You can just see it. And as we move the maps along, the culvert, the concrete culvert, runs roughly, although not in a straight line, in this direction. But look on the left map what we're cutting out. Look at those two vast, vast loops of the river Medlock we've cut out there. And it re-emerges there, roughly there, just at Princess Street. I'll put an arrow there for you on the right-hand map to see where it re-emerges. So you get the idea these two big loops we've cut out. Now I'm just going to cut to a section of the Medlock 7 video that you never saw and I'll just talk about that culvert roughly. This is the other side of the culvert. Uh, we're just by the Mancunian Way. See the river runs down here into a kind of a, a dip there and gets split either side. So we've dropped in in the middle of that culvert there. Um, but yeah, this is where we are, just at the side of the uh, Mancunian Way. Here's a picture of our culvert where I've just been stood. Um, this is called London Road Culvert 1962. And I'm guessing this is when all that work was done, late 50s, early 60s. I think that's the Mancunian Way up top there. Uh, the, the foundations for the Mancunian Way being put in. See, that's our culvert. And it looks like the diversion has just taken place, the Medlock diversion has just taken place, and there's all sorts of work going on, Mancunian Way, and now that they've diverted the Medlock, it looks like they get on with building the Umis campus. And there you go. So you see the two red arrows on the map. That is where the, the concrete box, the culvert, that we dropped into down the manhole, I'm presuming you watch Medlock 7, we dropped into that concrete box and it joins the two red arrows. Now, it's not a straight line, it's a kind of an arc, which greatly confused me. But you can see the former route of the River Medlock. There's basically two loops, a big loop that it cuts out and a smaller loop on the left-hand side. The big loop goes all the way up towards Granby Row and Altrincham Street, as you can see, comes just underneath the railway and then backs along and then meanders again um, on the other side. Now the the area of land in between those two loops, those two meandering loops, have both got their own little story. And it's that story I want to talk about in this video. I wanted to point out how, how the medlock's been culverted between the two red arrows and just look at the vast area or the vast length of the medlock that we've lost because of uh, Mancunian Way and because of the Umis campus. Well, let's look at those areas of land in between. And this is the first bit I want to look at, where the Medlock used to run up towards Altrincham Street, which is where I started the video. Just meander underneath the railway arches and then loop back downwards. Um, so let's take a look at that area because I've got some photographs to show you. Just quickly, here's the map, the modern map, and you'll see the uh, the Medlock left and right of uh, the screen there. Tucked away now in its culvert, well away, and it used to loop upwards there towards where it says Reynolds Building. You'll see Altrincham Street and the arches are there because you'll just see the faint grey line of the railway line. Vimto Park is what I walk through at the start of this video. So that's just a reference for you so we, you know roughly where we are. Let's take a look at these pictures. So, I've been entrusted with these photographs that I can only describe as Manchester history gold, to be honest with you. They are incredible. So I'm going to show them to you now. Uh, I've sort of categorised them in, in my head. So they go like this. Early 60s, um, the development of the Umist buildings. So you'll see a lot of building work going on. Then it's glimpses of the River Medlock and how it was just before it's about to be drained and filled in and gone forever and then it's the buildings and the streets that were that were lost and got torn down for this whole development 
when you're looking at them, try to, when you see the railway arches, that's Altrincham Street where I started this video off and everything was sort of stood back looking towards Altrincham Street. Behind that is the Eumis building and then Whitworth Street in Manchester. So that's where a lot of them are taken from. And again, they're in the two, they're taken from the two meandering loops of um, what, what, where the, the River Medlock ran. So without further ado, let's crack on and look at these photographs. So this is actually an incredible photograph. Have you spotted it? Let me just crop in for you to the right of the photograph. There you go. Look at that amazing steam train up on the viaduct. Now over in the background of that photograph you'll see the big arch and the smaller arch beneath it that the River Medlock runs in. I think the big arch is Archimedes Arch. So there you go, what do you think of them? Absolutely incredible, aren't they? And that's only about half of them. Some of them repeat and they're just slightly different views of the building work. But like I say, there's more pictures and that's just probably about half of them. I picked the most fascinating ones to be honest with you. So you've seen the best. So in the next section of the video, I want to concentrate now on this other loop, former meandering loop of the Medlock. And as we zoom in here, you'll see it says New Garrett Print Works. Well, that has got a story to offer as well.
So in January of 1968, when they were excavating that area to do the Umis development, and they were pulling down the new Garrett print works, they discovered a network of tunnels underground in Manchester. Here is a map of them, and I'm going to show you a 3D, uh, kind of a 3D drawing of them as well. An entire network of tunnels, absolutely incredible. Now, I've got that from the university website. It's so frustrating because there's so little written about these tunnels. But what you do need to know is that they've gone. They've been pumped full of concrete, filled in, and they've gone forever. I was hoping when I, way, way early on, when I decided to do the medlock in sections, I was hoping that at some point when we were down in the medlock, maybe in a culvert or something like that, we'd maybe get access to those tunnels, but they are long, long since gone. There's no information. There's very little information about them. The only and the best information is from Keith Warrender's book called Below Manchester. Um, I'll read you what he says rather than me try and pretend that I've, I've looked into it. I'm just literally reading from the book. A tunnel network was discovered during a site investigation of Area B you missed in January 1968. It was thought to have been used as a storage area for the Garrett print works above and then later to, dis to dispose of waste from a nearby works. Preliminary inspections were carried out in May, April and then March 1969. Um, they did a survey of the tunnels and uh, they were, some of them were flooded. They had to use pumps to pump out the water and they basically filled them in because they had all this new building that was going to sit on top of them. They pumped them full of concrete. And that's the only information I've got for you. There are some uh, photographs on the uh, on one of the on a website that I've took for you. Really poor quality photographs, but I'll show them to you. And they don't give much away. It's just that you're going to look at uh, um, some pictures of tunnels, basically. And that is it. So when you look at that vast network of tunnels, all it says is that they were used for storage and waste. Okay, so a little bit more information I've found for you from the Hidden Manchester map. If you just type in Hidden Manchester map, you'll find this on uh, Google. Um, this is what I'm just reading from this. It says, a notable discovery made in January 1968 when an extensive network of flooded tunnels 10 feet below the surface of the sandstone bedrock. A plan of the tunnels could only be prepared after they were first pumped clear of water to permit access for surveying over 1,000 feet of tunnels and seven access shafts were recorded. Speculation at the time was that the underground workings provided water storage for the print works which occupied the site from the 1830s. Internal views of the tunnels prior to the grouting, I presume that means filling with concrete, show localised brick vaulting and iron strutting. This is suggestive of late 18th or 19th century date but really it is impossible to be certain and the workings may be earlier. So there you go, I guess I'll never get to see me tunnels under you mist because they've all been filled in with concrete, but wouldn't it be great to have discovered them and have a look at them? Anyway, one last thing that we need to look at in this Medlock episode eight, because all this stuff that we've talked about was all there and we walked past it all in episode seven, but so we had to come back and revisit it. So the last thing we're gonna talk about is something I've touched on before, and it's Garrett Hall. If you know where the Garrett pub is in Manchester, it basically it stood around there. It was close to the River Medlock. It was just at the corner of Granby Row. I'll show you here on the 1793 map. So here you go, this is um, 1793. Now if you imagine we're around the Whitworth Street area of Manchester here, where this area was rural, and there we have it. You'll see it says Hall. Over on the right, you've got the River Medlock, um, you've got Shooter's Brook in the lower part of the um, of the map there, and uh, as you, as I say, it says Hall. This apparently was where a Roman road went off to Stockport on the south 
of England. That's why it's called Garrett's, because it's got um, a Roman history to it. There's the hall, extensive gardens around it, uh, beautiful fish ponds and surrounded by fields with Shooter's Brook running open. Absolutely idyllic scene, completely different to the way it is now because this is the Whitworth Street area of Manchester. Aurora Place there at the bottom, long since gone. Okay, so that's where Garrett Hall stood. Um, and I'll read to you now. A black and white timber frame mansion on a stone base said to have been similar in style to Hume Hall, which is what we touched on recently in another video. It stood south facing the River Medlock. It had numerous gables and tall chimneys. It was surrounded by a park through which ran Shooter's Brook. <laughs> um, it appears to have fallen into decay have been, and had been let into tenements before the end of the 18th century. So late 1700s, it's now tenements. It's said to have been standing in its entirety in 1824, was demolished or part of it was demolished sometime in the 1800s. So that's it, gone. Garrett Hall, long since gone, like Hume, Hume Hall. We can never see it. Or can we? And then I found out some information about Garrett Hall and what happened to it. Most of it was demolished and fell into disrepair and disappeared forever. Apart from one sad, forlorn gable end that survived. All the other buildings of Manchester that was now developing sort of encroached upon it. The beautiful gardens, the fish ponds, Shooter's Brook was culverted as we know all that disappeared probably duke's tunnel was built nearby and all that greenery went forever but this sad forlorn gable end remained and someone had the presence of mind to photograph it so you've got this old probably tudor timber frame building with all these other buildings around it encroaching upon it and I found that photograph. It says April 1910, Garrett Hall. Now, of course, this is what threw, threw me, confused me. I'm thinking you can't photograph Garrett Hall in 1910. It had gone. Didn't know about this gable end. It's a glass negative and it's broken. So it's got a piece of tape across it. And it's a really, really poor photograph. What I've done is I've took the photograph, I've put it in a Lightroom, Adobe Lightroom, and I've tried to enhance it a bit. So I'll show you the original and then we'll flick to my slightly enhanced version and we can finally look at that sad, forlorn gable end of Garrett Hall, which was near to our Shooter's Brook, predates Duke's Tunnel and faced onto our River Medlock. So here it is. So there you go, stories from the River Medlock. Um, and all that stuff, all that hidden and lost history, we passed by in episode seven. So I had to come back and revisit the area and tell the story of that in this, its own episode, episode eight. Um, we just couldn't go without talking about what had happened to the River Medlock. So that's it for number eight. The next River Medlock episode is number nine. And we go from Oxford Road round to Knot Mill. And to be honest with you, so far in wading in the Medlock, it's been really nice and easy. It's been quite pleasant to be honest with you. But from Oxford Road onwards, it got a bit nasty. It got a bit dangerous at times. Um, and in the culverts and around one particular area, it felt quite threatening. Um, odd things going on, deep, deep water um, and I wouldn't want to do it again, put it that way. 
But as we get round towards Knot Mill, just further back from Knot Mill, one of the River Medlock's tributaries joins it. You may have heard of it. It's called the River Tib. So in number nine, we may see part of, some of, or a little bit of the River Tib. Who knows? So I hope you enjoyed this episode and I shall see you very soon in the next video. Bye for now.